Hello viewers, SuperGT here. How are we all doing? Have you missed me? I hope you have. I bet you have. But anyway, I return. We, um, we're going to hit up the Nations Cup. And this was a mental race. As you can probably t uh, tell by the track, Special Stage Route X. Hell yeah. The best circuit on the game. And this is what happens when you jump on for the last time slot at 11. Look at that glorious circuit. Pure straight line. You can see everyone here using the uh, the Ferrari 458. And uh, we're going to go for the same one then. And see what we can do. Now, we head into practice. And there's not much to be said for practicing around this track. Because it's 100% full throttle. And... There's zero braking zones, there's two corners which are full speed and then there's two very long straights. Um, therefore, just driving in a straight line is the main skill you need. But um, judging from my experience, a lot of people do struggle with that. So it's going to be an interesting race, uh, primarily because of Slipstream I would, would have thought. But here we go then. Turns out... I'm actually in the top split. Top split driver confirmed. As we see uh, Mr. Elzy Artigny in the house. Big shout out to him. What a legend. Absolute legend. Sharing the love out to Mr. Tigny. Um, okay. Jumping out of the pit lane for qualifying. Uh, we're actually in first place there temporarily. Probably the only time we're going to see that. And uh, this is the... This is the scene in the back tunnel here at Special Stage Route X. I don't know what the heck that guy is doing, but he's going to get me a penalty at that at that rate and and himself one for good measure. So basically, what's happening here? Well, no one wants to go at the front because if you're at the front, you don't get slipstream. Therefore, your lap's going to be ruined. And I decide to mess the pack up here, so I go to trick everyone, and I, I just love doing this, to be honest, um, because qualifying it is just a game. It is just a silly little game. So I get everyone to go, and then I just stop. And uh, everyone was happy to get going there to set their qualifying laps, but some men just want to watch the world burn, and I'm most certainly one of those men. So we, we mess it up for everyone. And then I think they do get into a line here with me not at the front. I'll settle for something in the middle here. And now we can go for our qualifying lap. So pretty much everyone in the 458. I think there was someone in a different car. But for the most part, everyone's gone for plan F in the Ferrari. So across the line we go to begin our lap. And this is basically all you're going to see for this qualifying lap. Just everyone pushing each other about in a straight line, following the slipstream. And it's a good, uh, how long's the lap? I don't know, four minutes, three minutes, something? Four minutes, I think. Into the first corner, and no drama to report. And then at the end, you can actually see it got very close here. <laughs> how many times have you seen this at the end of a qualifying lap? About 13 cars in the space of two car lengths, crossing the line. And uh, we go into a phenomenal 10th position, half a second off the lead. Um, but to be honest, qualifying isn't too important here in any race that has, uh, that has slipstream. Um, qualifying not too, not too important. So we're going to go here. Two laps of special stage Route X. Now, I'm not sure who thought of this. I'm not sure whose idea this race was. But... On the one hand, I want to say that they're an absolute maniac because this tr this track is just stupid. But at the same time, you're in for a treat here, guys, because this, this race was pretty mental. Um, so the person actually come up with this idea was actually, in some ways, very smart. It was actually a very interesting race in many respects. Uh, so initially here, starting the race, of course, uh, in 10th, things are just going to settle down for the first couple of minutes, couple of hundred meters, couple of hundred miles as we got this massive, massive hill here. I'm not sure why they bothered building this massive hill. It must have cost billions or millions to make this massive hill. 
I guess for ships to pass underneath. Yes, that must be what it is because there are some docks over there. Um, but there you go. That's, that's as we almost lag out there. We're going to make our way to the front. I was worried this was going to give me a penalty here, but drifting a little bit wide beyond the yellow line. Doesn't seem to be any track limits here, so I'm going to go past and uh, straight towards the front of the pack, up into second place. Um, but of course, long way to go just yet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, as we've still got 18 other mad, mad men here who can easily beat us or punt us into the Shadow Realm. How many Shadow Realm entries have there been recently? Well, for me, not too many, because I haven't really been playing this game or any racing games for that matter. Um, so I'm quite averse to Shadow Realm entries as of late. Um, unless you include Lewis Hamilton punting me off during the various Grand Prix of the year. But aside from that, there haven't been many virtual sendings. And therefore I'm rather, rather averse to it at this current point in time. So let's try and avoid that for, for this race and the remainder of it. And just look how gloriously close this race is. I'm in ninth, and I'm only two tenths away from first. This is uh, rather staggering and unprecedented, if I may say so myself. As we uh, get the slipstream here, we're going to go for the lead. Get, get, uh, we're going to get the bump from behind. And this is where the race is going to somewhat settle down, as we see the horde behind. I'm, I'm into the lead of the race. Um, well, temporarily I was, anyway, for about half a second as we're going to tiptoe past each other, back and forth, going into first, going into second. And um, I'd love to know how long an actual Ferrari 458 can last at this kind of speed before just breaking down or running out of fuel. I'm guessing not too long. That's perhaps why they've only made it a two lap race. Um, so in the lead, we're in the right position. Now I just need to hold it for another lap and a half, but uh, easier said than done, of course. It's, um, it's a strange race. I mean, this is just it's just not like any other race. It's a purely tactical race. Positioning, timing, getting to the front of the pack at the right time. It's more like cycling. And I've, I've used that analogy many times on this channel, how a lot of the races can be similar to cycling, but this really is just very similar to cycling. Are you gonna try to make the dash to the front of the pack at the right time? Um, so we're gonna fall back a little bit here just look at that radar, honestly. There's about eight cars in there, maybe more. Ace Combat, um, Ace Combat memories, very, very real right now. But um, we're staying alive and we're not getting hunted down by any missiles at this exact point in time. Uh, we're gonna get the boost to Mr. Stefunzi there as we just head onto the banking at the back end of the circuit. Oh, there, there we go. There's our first victims into the Shadow Realm. And when we say this is a tactical race, the main tactic really is just to stay in the race until the end. Give yourself a chance. Don't be one of those people who you know, gets crashed out, sent to the realm, etc. Don't be one of those guys, uh, guys, because, well, as soon as that happens, you're out of it. As soon as you're out of the slipstream range, game over, as far as I'm concerned. And you don't want to do that. So crossing the line at the end of lap one, and I'm less than half a second away from the lead in 10th place uh, with five people immediately behind. And um, there we go, lap one complete, a four minute 30 lap. So we've got roughly another four minutes, maybe 20 seconds here of action. So we're going to head to the left hand side here. It's getting a little bit aggressive and we get smashed into the barrier. That guy gets spun, uh, got spun around McGee there, the Hungarian driver, gets spun about into the barrier. And that's just really a result of people being too aggressive, trying to get that slipstream, uh, that reduced air force, air force, reduced airflow clout behind the car in front, and people will fight aggressively for it. Um, but on that occasion, there was a victim in the form of the Hungarian McGee, uh, so he's out of it. That's one less person to worry about. The numbers are slowly dwindling. And as I said, you just want to stay in the race. That's the main objective here. Just make sure you don't die of death. Dying of death is not recommended. I spoke to my doctor about it and he said, yeah, don't do that, mate. You just, you just don't want to do that. Um, so I've taken his advice and actually 
I can I can honestly say that it's actually really worked well for me. So the fact that I haven't died of death so far in my life is actually it's actually really paying dividends, I must say. So I'd recommend that. Now, the race is settling down, or is it? I don't really know. Is it settled? It kind of is, but it kind of isn't. It's always on a knife edge. You're basically living on the edge here, and you could fall off at any given moment if you just put one foot wrong. So we're going to try to make sure we don't do that. As we exit the, um, the third corner of the race, there's only four corners in this race, unless, you're, uh, unless you count swerving around other people who are crashing. Uh, so we're going to head over to the right hand side here, have a brief little encounter with the barrier, and we're going to give our slipstream to the Italian here, as we're going to try to make our way towards the front of the pack. Now this is where things are going to get slightly more interesting as uh, the German coming across into the Italian. Not quite happy about his position in there. And uh, the Frenchman there giving us a nice boost. And uh, the French and the British working together just like World War II. Brilliant stuff. And well, did they work together? I was hearing about this um, watching a documentary about when the British sunk a load of French battleships even though they were on the same side. Great stuff, eh? Friendly fire. Um, don't you just love that? Um, but anyway, off that subject, that's a bit uh, bit ropey of a subject to be talking about. We've got a race going on here. Uh, so we're making our way slow to the front. And I'm, I'm working with our boy here, Tijney. Absolute legend. So we're going to push our way into the front. And now you see here, as we approach the latter stages of the race, it very much has taken on a very different kind of formation. As we've gone for the single line formation as uh, ACC somehow do downloads itself halfway through this race. Um, and this kind of suggests to me that people are really just trying to get into position. And it, again, it's like cycling. They do this in cycling. They get into the line and then you're just waiting for the opportune moment with which to pull out and absolutely go for it. Go full ham. Okay, coming up to the corner, Tijani going to go to the inside. I was actually listening to his live stream uh, whilst doing this race so I actually could hear his thoughts. I'm going to pull in behind him. We've got the inside line here, tactically in a good position, but someone behind the Dutchman out of nowhere gets on my inside and this is where things are going to get really rather ropey as we approach the end of the race. We've only got about 20 seconds left as we come out of the final corner. There's about 10 of us who could possibly win this one. Tijani in the lead there. I'm going to get the slipstream off the Spaniard. Pull to the left. Are we going to get back onto the podium? Third place. So we come up to the line. Back into fourth. And it's the Dutchman who wins it. Look at that result. Nine players within 0.3 of a second. Absolutely incredible. I finished fourth. Not sixth, but I did go up six positions. So some consolation. 295 points earned. But that was that race. The FIA season is actually over now. Uh, so that was a couple of weeks ago, that race. Um, so the FIA actual seasons are done. Uh, so we're gonna, I'm going to show you some old clips that I managed to just dig up here. Because that race actually wasn't that long enough. It would have only been a, a, what, a 13 minute video. Um, that's not long enough, is it? You want some more. Especially if I'm only going to be uploading once every month or three weeks. Don't worry, that's not going to actually be the case. I'm going to be uploading more often very soon. Um, so this is some daily race from, I don't know, April 2019 or something. Uh, so quite a while ago. Porsches around the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Um, starting fifth, trying to make our way through. Just a one lap race. And we're going to do our best, of course, to not die. Uh, not die of death, as recommended by the best doctors out there. And uh, try to make sure the other people die of death instead. That's the main objective around the Nordschleife. And um, yes, yeah, so I was just going to say that yes, the channel has been quiet recently. Um, just taking a bit of a break from YouTube because, you know, for so many years I've just been working flat out on it as this corner actually claims many lives. Um, I've just been working flat out on YouTube for so long and I never really had so you know that much free time and actually it's good at the moment just to just take a bit of time away do some different things see your friends go on some dates do this and that and just enjoy life a little bit 
But you know, I will be coming back very strong very soon. So don't you worry. I'm not actually dead or anything. Just um, I suppose this, this is something that happens to most to a lot of YouTubers, and I'm surprised that um, you know in the racing scene, you could say the racing game YouTuber scene, there are a lot of YouTubers who are just working flat out for so long, and sometimes I can't believe that they don't take breaks. To be honest, I think it's a bit of a healthier way to go to take some breaks to to make sure that you don't overload yourself, don't outdo yourself. Um, because as, as much fun as YouTube is and as much fun as sim racing is, it can get become a bit of a grind doing it as a job. And, you know, don't feel sorry for me, but, um, <laughs> you know, I'm not asking for sympathy here, but it can get tricky when it becomes your job and therefore, um, you know, the focus comes away from fun and it shifts to a more professional uh, demeanour, if that makes sense. But, um... They're going to be making some changes as um, they make some changes to each other's positions there by ramming each other off. Nice stuff. Um, but it wasn't to last long, that, as um, I ruined my own race here by just breaking way too late. Not having a reference in front of me equals RIP Ripperoni Pizza in peace. And um, this didn't work quite well for me, so I went straight off. Look at the penalties here. 7.5 seconds. <laughs> So you can see this is definitely a different iteration of the penalty system. And this, this incident here was quite interesting. So the guy is on my left-hand side here, and I he was alongside, and I turn in on him. I just didn't give him space. And looking back at that, I think, why did I do that? I don't know why I did that. Not a good move, and it cost me two further positions. Um, so that was just a bit of a crap piece of driving, really, for me. And uh, from the Spaniard there, who just has a nice little trip to the wall. Which is commonplace around the Nurburgring, I must say, after the YouTube videos I've been watching. Uh, so we're going to find ourselves in sixth place, actually. Going to try to make our way up and do one better. Um, but then this corner, probably one of my worst corners on this track, actually. It just did that. The curb just basically chewed me up, spat me out, and said, uh, go and pay a visit to the wall. And um, for good measure, got a five second penalty. Yeah. You explain that one, atheists. Uh, so at the end of the race, serve the penalty, as you used to be able to do, and I didn't actually serve it properly. And finish in eighth. Absolutely disastrous. Should have been a second, really. I was in second, had it all in the bag, and ruined it. Uh, here's another race, I think from about the same time. Uh, sort of, uh, what was it, spring 2019-ish. If you enjoy these old clips, maybe I can go through some more, some more of them. Perhaps you remember them, perhaps you don't, I don't know. Who knows? But I found it quite entertaining going through these old ones. It's uh, make believes. A make believe. Make. Be I was trying to make a good joke there, but I couldn't. Uh, but basically, he sends himself off onto the grass. This is Goodwood. I think this is when Goodwood first came out on the game. Uh, so we're in the Ferrari 458 here. Uh, the Group 4 race. And it wasn't long. You know, the race was going well up till this point. Pretty much that point there. I'd say that point there, the race was going alright, and then after that, it's yeah, it went rather downhill and over some grass. We rejoin, and then this guy's race was going alright, until I did this, spun him round, sent him to the realm. Got ourselves a five second penalty for that. Fair enough, okay, yeah, I did kill him. That was as blatant a murder as it gets. Uh, a bit further round, uh, some rather funky looking malarkey going on here through turn one. Try to get ahead of these guys as we serve the penalty. Awkward penalty serve there as we get flown through by many people. I'm just waiting for the push. Someone push me. Someone push me. No one does. Oh, then the, the, the Spaniard in the Ferrari comes out of nowhere to my rescue. And I get a five second penalty for that. Great stuff. Fantastic work. Algorithm. Penalty algorithm. A little bit later. We serve our second penalty, second five second penalty, and we all know it, serving those five second penalties is one of the worst pains known to mankind. Uh, but this is the comeback, we go past that guy, that guy, that guy, and then we get into the slipstream of the Russian. Luckily he's not wide Putin, so he's not that wide, we can go past him and uh, get the job done. Tidy little cutback, if I may say so myself. Up into 11th, up into 10th, past him up into ninth past that guy, 
and uh, that guy going slow. So everyone just killing themselves a bit later on in this race, which is quite handy, if I might uh, say so. We exit the pit lane in 17th, which is pretty shoddy, but I've gone in for an early pit stop. Um, by this point, sitting in 8th, 9th, 8th, and then we're going to go full aggression mode here. As Dr. Disrespect would say, momentum, speed and violence. And that is... Uh, those are that's a tantra that I can uh, that I can live by, you know. A man tantra, mantra. Get get it right, mate. Jesus Christ, you can have commentated in a while, can't you? Um, tantra. No, that's not the word I was looking for. Um, Try to push this guy, and we're going to follow the mantra of Doctor Disrespect by trying to go past the Lamborghini in the superior Ferrari. Is it superior? Which is the better brand? You let me know. Lamborghini or Ferrari? Up the inside though, into the sector last corner. Get the job done, up into fifth. Glorious. But it wasn't to end there actually. Um, so it's actually a decent comeback I suppose, given that how much rubbish started <laughs> and that guy actually sends himself into the grass. Look into the pit lane, did you see that? I do recall this memory actually, uh, the weird humping going on in the pit lane. And then um, this, um, this Finnish driver just puts himself on the grass. So thank you for him doing that and then we finish in fourth good stuff but that is the video over um thank you again for everyone for sticking by me in these weird times i'm going to be making some changes to the patreon and channel memberships i do thank anyone who has stayed supporting me in those forms and i do apologize for not you know bringing you as much worth for your payment um but your support is very much appreciated and you know i'll make it all clear what's going on very soon um, but in September, I, I'd say September would be where I'm going to be starting to come back as I was before. But in the meantime, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You probably did because you're still here. That's kind of how it goes. Um, any new subscribers, any new people here, give us a sub if you, if you enjoyed it. And um, just a massive thank you. As always, take, take care, everyone. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.